in this always on, I want it now world in which we live, patience is a virtue in short supply. But in the investment world, it can be your greatest ally. Today, in the third episode in this series looking into some of the world's most successful investors, we'll be taking a look at the master of the long game, Sir John Templeton. This willingness to play the long game is one of the key traits you'll notice about a world-class investor. They're not expecting to make their millions overnight. A good investment strategy could take years, maybe even decades, to come to fruition. A good investor will be able to ignore temporary fluctuations in the market and media hype to stick to their system, confident that their research and intuition will lead to that all-important big money payout. Born in Tennessee of British parents in 1912, Sir John Templeton is best known today as a hugely successful stock investor, businessman and philanthropist. His interest in business developed at an early age and he first made a name for himself with a gutsy bet on the future of the American economy when it was on its knees. He bought into swathes of Japanese manufacturing companies and simply held stock until the country's economy took off. The result is that today the Templeton Growth Fund, now called Franklin Templeton, manages over $15 billion worth of assets, turning a tidy profit of nearly $3 billion a year. So how did Templeton achieve the returns that he did? What strategies did he use? Well, although he died in 2008 at the ripe old age of 95, his 16 rules for investment are still pinned to the walls at Franklin Templeton and are very much in use today. His 16 rules provide a way to look for an undervalued stock which might outperform the market. If a stock price is low but the company behind that stock price has got good fundamentals in place, you're looking at a low-risk investment with potential for big gains. For Templeton, good fundamentals meant having a favourable balance sheet, lots of assets, lots of customers and great products or services. He also looked for companies that had paid out regular dividends going back over many years. Of course, these companies were not easy to come by. At any given time, the majority of good companies would be priced at value or even be overvalued. But that didn't deter Templeton. He stuck to his system of only investing in companies whose stock he believed to be undervalued. The more undervalued, the better. John's most important rule is to understand as much as you can before you invest. If you need to pay someone to help you understand something, pay them. Every time you invest, you should know the exact reasons why you're investing. Don't be second-guessing, it's a, a mugs game that will lose you money. Because you've done your research and you know why you're investing, you won't be put off by hysterical newspaper articles or media hype. That said, circumstances do change and as an investor you should always be on the lookout for political, economic, social or environmental triggers which could affect your investments. Templeton warned against being complacent, and he's right. Just because you made what you thought was a good investment decision two years back, it doesn't mean it's still a good decision today. You should regularly return to your investments, not just to check their performance, but to examine the reasoning behind why you made that investment decision in the first place. Is it still relevant today? Don't be afraid to question your own decisions. But if you do change your mind, make sure your decision is based on logic and reasoning and not influenced by your emotions or market sentiment. Templeton's investment decisions in the late 90s are a great case in point. He never saw any value in dot-com shares and made a fortune for clients shorting them after correctly predicting that the majority of them would be bust in five years' time. Speaking to Forbes magazine a decade earlier in 1988, John said, People are always asking me where the outlook is good, but that's the wrong question. The right question is, where is the outlook most miserable? 
His decision to short the Nasdaq was ridiculed by many seasoned investors at the time, but it was Templeton who had the last laugh as the returns rolled in. If you'd have invested $10,000 in the Templeton Growth Fund in 1954 with dividends reinvested, it'd be worth around $2 million today. That's not a bad retirement fund by anyone's measure. And that's why many funds and fund managers still follow some of Templeton's investment rules to this day. But will you do the same? It takes a lot of courage to follow Templeton's strategy, so unless you're prepared to hold on to your investments for up to 20 years before seeing a return, be very careful out there. He doesn't know or care about how one company is performing against another in its sector. He believes the market is nearly always wrong. 